Let me start by saying um, this podcast is designed. You know, a lot of times people go misunderstood artists, mm -hmm. um, actors, and so it's basically designed for you to come represent yourself in your own words. Also, we're going to have a lot of stories to tell. Like, Brian going to tell you how he went from be becoming a bike maker <laughs> to going to the radio. You know? He made my first bike. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to touch a lot on who Brian is. Career radio right now. I'm, this is a new world for me, so this is the first podcast ever. Um, I've been a guest on a couple. So I'm excited to be on a platform where I can really, really express myself. Exactly. That don't belong to right. somebody else. Yes. And our perspective on a lot of things. A, a lot of issues that are going on, social media, you know. I, I, I think there's a lot of things that go on out there. And yeah. then the people who comment, and all the commentary is way off base and wrong. And so I think this will be the place to straighten the, all that out. Yeah, a good example. Like, Brian, you know... Um, I thought it was like, you know, an annual thing and maybe holidays, but he really gives back, like, mm -hmm. nonstop. So we want to talk about positivity. A lot of right. times people don't commend and or communicate about the positive things. If I fell off the bike, that would be the topic for about six months. Right. Oh, yeah. But when a man, you know, take time out of his life, you know, to give food to the homeless, to give coats, um, um, assistance shelter, stuff like that or whatever, they don't talk about that. Yeah. It's not important. Yeah, and I appreciate that because, like, we just did the turkey drive and you came out and hung out with us all day. Describe the feeling you had, like, when you witnessed people really needing what we brought to them, man. You know what? Be totally honest with you. You know, I like to joke a lot, but to be dead serious with you, mm. I feel like one of those Christmas movies, man. <laughs> you know, for real, you know how... Remember, remember, I had a bad week, right? And then I met up with Brian, right? And... It was like, yes. fa la 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 la, after that I was happy. Hey, what, what, yo, yo, you good? I'm like, yo, man, me and Brian, we went, yo, we went over here, we went to Durham, we went over to, uh, um, to the mission, um, um, the mission base over here, we did this and that, I met new people with that, and before you knew it, you know, my bad week, uh, my down spirits was at an all-time high, man, yeah. so it made me feel good. And the cool thing yeah. about it, man, like, we're on 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th annual, so yeah. this was before Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So we put it out on the social space so people um, know what we're doing. And I also think it brings competition, the good competition, for yeah. people to mm -hmm. try to one-up you and what they can do in the community. So that's a healthy thing. But it's not about social media. you got to do it because you love to do exactly. it. Exactly. From, from, you know, from I lost my brother when he was 19 um, in a car accident. So all charitable things I do is always in his name. Tasha yeah. Wood, I call it the TSW Foundation. So. We try to make sure we do a lot for kids, a lot for homeless people, people who really can't help themselves yeah. and try to put them in the right space. So thanks for acknowledging that, man, but we do yeah. it for the love. We talk about it a lot, man, but like last thing, like we like the mouthpiece. Um, they're real community activists that's doing this every day. Yeah. So I just use my platform to elevate what they're already doing, and I make sure I stay in my place, but I appreciate no, it. No, I commend you. Good job, man. You know? Hey, um, let me ask you another question. What you think about the... um? The master, uh, master P and his son Romeo. Good Friday. topic. Everybody's talking about that. You know, um, you know, I, you know what? Um, this morning, two or three times, I had to replay what Master P was saying. I don't think Romeo get that he didn't know how to express himself at the time that his daughter, Romeo's sister, was was, was going through what she was going through. He mm -hmm. said it. It probably frightened him, but then at the same time. He probably couldn't foresee her taking her life. Right. He just knew she was stressing, going through turmoil. But, you know, you know, listen, we 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 are like the the, the the lower level of the industry, and we go through stress. So could you imagine so, what they're going through? You work four or five hundred million dollars. So for and, people who don't know, the daughter um, took her life via suicide. Yeah. I didn't. I think I didn't. I heard when she died. I didn't know what the outcome. So that's. Yeah. And right. then he commented on DJ Twitch's mm -hmm. store, and then the son got involved. Okay, so yeah. I, I think I'm caught up on. No, but I just think Romeo. I think he. You know, I understand Romeo. Like, man, your daughter just went through this, and then you know this guy passed away, and then you comment on it. Maybe he didn't know how to comment on it the first time. Right. You know, like right. he said, you lost your sister, but I lost a right. daughter. And he understand. He said. He said. I understand now that you know, um, mental illness, you know, 
it, it, it it's different. He see it different. He view it differently. Yeah. Now, you know, yeah. so and everybody grieves differently, and you can't tell someone how to grieve. So, you know, um, I can understand Romeo and feeling the way he does and looking at his his dad like, oh, you know, you could have did this and you could have did that, but. You have no idea how, how really to handle it. And that's why therapy is so important for both the person going through it and the family members so that you know how to deal with that person who's going through everything. Because I've said it over and over again. There's a big difference between being depressed and having depression. It's two totally different things. And if you're not, if you haven't experienced it, or been around someone who has, or had the tools to deal with something like that, you know, it's, it's you mess around and, and make things worse. And so that's what, I think that's what we're seeing out on yeah. social media. Well, I think, I guess the first thing I think of is, this is definitely not something that should be handled via social media. No. Like we shouldn't yeah. be all into this much of it, right? That's, that's, that's the first thing. That's the reason why we were about to said. He said, um, as much as I don't want to take to the internet, he said, I, I, I've called my son. He don't ask, he won't call back. So I'm going right. to speak, speak my piece. After that, I'm not doing it no more. And Everything he said was accurate. Like, you know, but like, what's crazy, though, <clears throat> is so I, I saw that, and then I saw his son reply that he has tried to reach out. So we don't know quite where the truth is on how it totally got out there, but it's got to be a lot of hurt and pain in his son and it affected me a lot because, like, I don't know if y'all are quite aware, but, like, my oldest son, like, I put him out there early. Like, I had him on com radio commercials at one. Like, like as soon as he could talk, yeah. I was getting him on. And so and then I, I had him DJing for the Hornets um, like when he was eight or nine. I did a I lot of stuff that. for him, some of which some of the things he didn't gravitate towards once yeah. he got a chance to really make his own choice. So when I heard Master P's son, who I saw Master P do a lot of things that I probably picked up on, and how to give your child the advantage. It did hurt me a lot because I saw the love he put in his kid then and to see him, I guess I think it's something like 30. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to see it at this point, it just makes you stop and think about a father-son relationship. It's, that's a tough one. Yeah. I didn't want to do this. Can I voice my opinion, my honest mm -hmm. opinion? I think it's Angela Simmons. I'm 74, man. You think no, it's for who? real. I think now that she's dealing with Yo Gotti, right? Okay. And Romeo wants to we gain whatever form of communication it is, whatever, and she's so far gone. Because they were a couple, Master, right? Yeah, and Master People, he told her, you're no good, she's damaged goods. Yeah. And he may have, you know, he was typing the farm. Maybe he listened to the farm and backed up for a second, and now, and she like, and he see her, yo, Gotti. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's probably, probably a whole lot them. of things. So right. he used the suicide thing with um DJ, what you call it, and his sister has, no, I guess to, to say the platform. Just to, to get at him, yeah, yeah. To just to out. lash out at his father. You know what I mean? For That's a what lot I really believe, things. man. Yeah, and it's weird. Again, here's a subject that we all looking at it. Like the lens I saw this from was again from the father. What he, how much of an advantage he gave his son early, and how much is it paying off now? And I and and it's interesting to see. I haven't really seen him, and maybe he's doing stuff that we don't know about. But is his career taking off, or does he feel like he's stalled out? His dad obviously been going through some well-documented issues and financial things, trying to stay alive. I mean, doing what he's been doing as a, as a black um, entrepreneur. And now his dad probably can't do for him what he used to could do for him. And did he really absorb all the things his dad was teaching him? Mm -hmm. And is he at a bad space in his mind right now? I think so. Like, you know, um, <clears throat> remember Master Peter was saying, yo, um, we're not doing the show. We left eight men on the table, so so forth. Well, you know, Romeo just went back to the show. Right. So. Right. You know. Now, I'm going to tell you, one time P was at the radio station. I'll never forget. And um, some I didn't even mention it to her. Somebody, I, it was actually for our turkey drive. And somebody mentioned, hey, you know, we doing this for the turkey drive. He went straight in his pocket and pulled out like four, five hundred dollars and said, who I need to hand this to? Like just mm -hmm. So, and then yeah. I heard countless stories about stuff he was doing in South Central and Compton back in New Orleans. So. I don't know. I like P. I'm rooting for him, man. We all go yeah. through ups and downs, and yeah. I just like to see the situation. And he was very open and honest about the fact that he said, hey, we I came into all of this money, but I'm still... Right. Right. You know? Yeah, he said, he said, he said you know, I got on. 
I fell off, got back on. He said, he said, he said, we go through it or whatever. That's what we do, man. Yeah. It, it don't need to be out there. It's not our business right. if he up or down, you know, because it it doesn't yeah, matter, right? Like, but then that's the that's the difference in the generations where we like to do things privately. No question. Where the younger generation yeah. wants to throw it out there, you know, and and, um, it, and it's it's what they're used to. And just a message um, to like our future guests and future co um, co-host. Um, we're not gonna let you Kanye, man. We know how to censor and stop you, so don't don't worry. Right. We got you. We got you. All right, we're not gonna let you Kanye. You know what I mean? And I mean, but Kyrie different. I I kind of I kind of sympathize with Kyrie Irving. I mean, I think absolutely. I think he did what we all do. We we'll see something, and we may not get to the end of it, but go hmm, that was a lightning. Let me throw it out there. Right. He threw it out there without. Yeah, I know. I've shared a lot of things. Right. So, so what happens is he throws it out there, and then somebody actually took the time to watch the whole thing. So, oh, this this this, this is a a a a crime race, oh, and, and so he's the victim. I kind of I kind of yeah. feel like mm -hmm. of not reading. You know what I mean, he's a real rap brother, but at that mm -hmm. point he didn't read the whole thing. He just reposted it. He's the victim. Now Kanye on the other end, come on, bro, you know better, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kanye got some, I think he got some mental <coughs> things. Just really well, he does, yeah. Obviously yeah. going on. And every couple he months, do, he, he says got the wrong his, his diagnosis around. is different. So. Yeah. He got the wrong people. Who does that? Who allowed a person to crash and burn like that? Like, where is your support group at? Where is your friends at? Your real friends? You don't have an aunt or somebody to say, hey, baby, don't do that. It you can like say what you want, but it's the way in which you put it. You just went straight the Jews. Right. This, that, like, you know, you could, <clears throat> he could have voiced his opinion or his, or his political views in a better, in a better format, um, use different words, you know. I'm a black man. I, I felt hate coming out of his words. I'm like, like, what's wrong with Kanye? We know he got a mental problem too. Right. You know, yeah. and the thing with his wife didn't help him, made it, made, made it worse. But, you know, I just feel like sometimes people will deliberately sit there and watch you crash and burn. Yeah, well, when you have a diagnosis and you're not acknowledging it and you don't, and you're, you're not acknowledging it at all. So that means you're not trying to get therapy. You're not trying to figure things out. You're not trying to rationalize at all. So this is the result. You know, and I saw... Just recently, he he gave out something else, an, another diagnosis. Oh, I don't I don't have bipolar, I have this. Now it's something else, but it's never what it. I don't even know where the the whole bipolar thing came from right. in the first place. Has he really been diagnosed? Who knows? Right. Something is wrong, but he's not acknowledging that. Instead, he's just a superhero, and I and I don't I don't mean to say that. I'm not trying to be funny because. With me having bipolar one, we do say that we are we're superheroes. I was about to ask you, what's your diagnosis? Bipolar one. <laughs> and that is. What do you mean? Define it. I'm trying to understand two. what. Bipolar one. Well, bipolar one is it's two, three, is, four, five. No, there's one and two. Okay. One is the worst. Um, but um, what happens is, for the an easier, more simple way to of explain it, I have highs and I have lows. So. I can be manic or I can be depressive. Um, for some people, they can be manic for a couple of hours or a couple mm -hmm. of weeks or a couple of months, and then they'll switch up to depression. And then, you know, and, and it'll cycle. That's one. Yeah, and that's one. Um, What's two then? For me, I don't remember. Okay. I should know, but yeah. I don't. Um, and I, but I know mine, and for me, I had to have intensive therapy to get to where I am now. So a lot of people who are around me forget that I have. So when I start getting a little different, mm -hmm. you know, they don't realize, okay, nah, she's... But see, that's why we, it's good that we ask her. Now we know, so 
You know, I'm gonna keep a little taser. <laughs> See, I knew, so, I knew it was coming. Tighten so. you up, a little taser. <laughs> no, and seriously, you know? sometimes I do need that. Sometimes, I, and I let people know I'm very open with it. So, <laughs> as a person who understands, obviously, the condition, <laughs> you can't look at Kanye and see that he don't have a serious mental. No, he absolutely has problem. a serious. But because he hasn't unchecked. acknowledged it, he's not getting the, the the therapy that he needs and the tools that he needs and the medication. And that he could have been getting it. As a part of that last marriage, and it seemed like every the damn kind of kind of broke after. Did it to him, yeah, yeah, the damn scene that broke after he got him. I'm not saying that was a healthy after situation. After he fell for him, out of pocket, she allowed him to witness this weirdo, this tattooed up weirdo, around his kids, man. Oh, you talking about the whole dating so of the that's okay? Yeah, that, I, I, dude was bogged down too. He yeah, I, I didn't understand her in that whole move. That was crazy. For real. Wasn't he drinking blood and all type of crazy I stuff? I don't know. He's the, he was a weirdo, man. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that. Old, yeah. Man, the guy was a weirdo. I don't understand what, 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 what was that about. You know? Yeah. I think I think she let him in more out of spite to Kanye than anything. I don't know. You know? And that really messed him up. Yeah. Versus I, his mother did his wife. You know, that's kind of crazy. I mean, and for them, I don't know. Again, that that whole thing seems dysfunctional. Like yeah, their that whole world lifestyle, is mm -hmm. the whole Kardashian movement. Um, financially successful, but it don't seem like it's no. anything of any substance behind any of that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, you know that they just they, they just bust it open and get paid for it. Yeah, yeah. It. And so. like you said, he does. It doesn't look like he has someone who he can trust to say, "Hey, yeah. go sit down." Yeah, because I mean, it didn't make sense for him to lose that much money that fast. It don't help nobody. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It don't help. Him, his movement. I mean, let's face it. Money makes the world go round. You can't lose that kind of wealth. Yeah. It, and it's just well, too much to be, right. you know. I, I, and, I'm and, still waiting to hear the lawyers, man. Where's the loophole to say, hey, listen, Adina, you got to pay that. Right. Man. But but see, they always find a way to take that kind of wealth from us as fast as they can anyways. Um, off subject, but go back to the, to the Jacksons um, and the way that all that money that Michael Jackson made went to white people. Hmm. Lawyers, his kid... And they made it look like when the mom and dad was asking for money, like they were in the wrong. Right. Yeah, you know what right. I'm saying? So I think this was a money play as we watched Kanye lose two or three billion. I don't know how accurate that number is, but that's a lot of resources out of the black community, exactly. per se. I look at it. Because his, cause his net worth had, 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 at one point had been 11.2 billion, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Then they scraped yeah. him and it went down to 400 million. Right, and I mean, we we don't obviously know the real numbers, but the numbers, whatever it is, is too much um, to be happening. And and final thought on the on the Kyrie. So Kyrie to me was a sacrificial lamb. So I mean, think about it. he gets in trouble for reposting something that's on sale on Amazon. Right. If it's that bad, or it's plays in movie theaters. Right. It, it, it's too much. It's like taking a hammer and trying to kill a fly on a glass table. It was just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. But shout out to Kyrie. He's balling yeah. right now. He doing his thing. Shout out to Kyrie, man. Yeah, he mm -hmm. doing his thing now, and they don't talk about that at all. Yeah, he, he back to this again. Yeah, <laughs> no question. Hey, what you know about that over there? What yeah. you know about that? <laughs> yeah, I got a little heavy, but I, boy, I actually got a game. You know? <laughs> I'm going to take him up on that one, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is the part of the segment on the next episode well, you're going to see Brian sitting on, on, on a ball court <laughs> with the ice pack. That's a big game. Well, I just skipped it. <laughs> hit him with the drop step and went back and then it took off, showed the bump him a little bit. I need to warn him. Every morning you check on me where I'm at. At the gym. At my gym. You say you're going you, you to get you and Corey over there, so we got to make that happen. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, um, as far as the Kyrie thing, I felt like it was the perfect opportunity for all of the, all of us with wealth to step in and support that person, regardless right. of what, what was happening to him was too much. Right. And so, and, and all of us, everyone should have stepped right. in yeah. I mean, and protected him. But I'm sorry, cause you didn't cut me off, but this is where I think the problem was. They picked someone that that's where our infighting and our lack of unity hurt us. Yes. Kyrie was hanging out. He's been misunderstood in our community from the beginning. He's one of the true, um, I, don't, I ain't even going to try it. What's the word? Philanthropic. How do you say the word? 
philanthropist. Yes. He's uh -huh. one of the true ones yes. in the NBA. I'm, and he don't get nowhere near the credit like a LeBron James get. Mm. But he does just as much, if not more, in his own way. Man. And he's a seeker of truth and reality. And sometimes when you're seeking things, you're going to be wrong. And it's okay. I mean, it's not okay so, to think the earth is wrong? flat. But, I mean, that's a whole yeah. other story. But I'm saying, so Kyrie gets ostracized for things. But he's just, to me, he's a very smart person. He's a genius in what he's trying to get done. But anyway, so getting back to your point, we've already made him a demagogue in our community. Like people, been, we've been against him. So so when you get someone out there, I think those are the ones they pick on. They knew we wasn't going to come. Mm -hmm. it, let's say that been LeBron. They were the fourth. We would have stopped it. They right. wouldn't even attack LeBron. They, they like, wouldn't attack him for one. Right. Right. Phone. They would have called his phone first and say, um, LeBron, the thing we posted, did you like, really watch it? He said, no, I watched a little bit. I ran out. Right, right. Give me a favor. Um, unpost it. Take it down. It's not, it's, it's, it's not politically sound. Right. But with Kyrie, ah. Yeah. So we made it easy. Yeah. I'm sorry to keep yeah. on your point, you're, but we no, made it easy right. for them to attack him. Right. Because that's yeah. how we do. And see, I was glad. I, th I saw when Farrakhan spoke up, the tide started to change when people started saying, wait a minute, we got all these pundits going on TV really dogging him, and they're not helping him, and they're not speaking up. And then they really, they, you know, you're a Cowboy fan, I'm a Cowboy fan. So when the Jerry Jones thing came up, yeah, and then right. everybody wanted to push it under the rug, it was the example. Exhibit exactly. A. Exactly. They go, they go as far back as, remember um, um, the Terrell Owens thing? When um, he fell out with Romo and them? Yeah. Because he stopped passing the ball, something like that. Right. It's the same thing. They dog to you out, send them to another team and all that. Like, we don't never get, we don't never yeah, get Yeah, Jerry a Jones is break. the worst. Yeah. The, I mean, I was a Cowboy fan. I'm an old school Cowboy mm -hmm. fan. And um, sometimes he make me reconsider, but very unfortunate, man. Yeah. Like you, know. you said, the infighting is the issue. We make it easy for somebody mm -hmm. to, yeah. And they know who we right. love and who on the outside, and then they, yeah. they attack Because we don't way. keep that that's your question, in the right? family. Like, um, right now, you know, your personal truth, right? What's your life's goal? Ooh, right now? Yeah, you know, you know, for, you know, for, um, starting with the near future. Yeah. Or, and, you know, down the road. Man, I'm at an interesting point in my career at this, at this time. Obviously, trying to check off a lot of new things on the bucket list like this. Um, you know, being in radio for 23 years, watching that whole industry move around. Um, having gained some financial security, it's really about trying to see the impact that I can make. Obviously, starting how I can change the world through my kids and be there for every step that they're doing. And then how can I really help some other people, man? Um, I've been lucky, like, since I was 28, financial, you know, I've been financially situated. Yeah. I don't want much. I don't do much. But um, I've been lucky and, and blessed. So right now, it's just really about doing things I really want to do, travel. I want to get out and do a little more things, have more control of what, you know, what it is that I do, though. That's a good question, man. Yeah. How about you? I'm definitely trying to get to DR. Yes. Love the DR. That's like, that's my happy place in Jamaica. Jamaica's my other happy place. Um, but um, I, I've been DJing a lot. So I actually, you know, I started DJing when I was 87, in, in 1987, but I never took it serious, obviously. But it's kind of cool to come back later in my entertainment career and then really start taking it serious. Yeah. And um, start to get more gigs and start to really love that craft. So I can see that's something like owning a lawnmower. I can get old and do that. You know what I'm saying? I can go do weddings, still kind of feel like I'm in the game. I can DJ old school pool parties at Myrtle yeah. Beach or something. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of, I'm looking forward to stuff like that. That's what's up. How about you? Um, basically what we're doing now. Um, I look forward to interviewing people. Um some people out there got some real, real, real juicy questions for them. Now. <laughs> you know, we got get, we got some people that, we gotta get at. Yeah, stuff that that people people didn't ask them, but it's not gonna be controversial. Like I'm not gonna shoot them under the gun, but there's certain things that I feel that if certain questions would have been asked, it would it would have got yeah. a different response. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's all about how you ask a question. Yeah. And that's why I did ask you, what's, what's your life? Boom, boom, boom. So this way, when you break it down, in case they be whatever, we can go back at this tape and look back and say, all right, well, that's changed now. Because down the line, you know, you know, you know, I'm always asking a funny question. What did you think about this way here, this and that? Mm. Um, <clears throat> how did you feel when you saw that accident? You know, stuff like that or whatever. And then we can always go back, backtrack, and look at from where you at now to maybe months down the line, years down the line to that point. Are your views the same? 
Mm. What ideology are you working with now? You know what I mean? What school of, what school of thought are you dealing with? And so I always ask, I always ask a, a question that may not seem like much, but down the line you say, damn, why he asked that? Because now I'm here, mm -hmm. rewind. Oh, You can go yeah. back and look at it. 2022, I said that. It's 24, and I, I, I accomplished that. You know what I mean? So I always ask those questions. Mm -hmm. How about you? Well, I've always hated questions like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, thinking about it and listening to the two of you, I realize the three of us are big givers. I've always been that way. Um, went to school, studied sociology, had my degree in sociology. Because my goal was to, was, and I guess it kind of still is, to go into counseling um, and not just with anybody. I really want to deal with people who are re-entering society because I find that a lot of people who are who come home, their family puts so much stress on them that they end up going right back. So, um, and I've talked to a lot of people who had that issue. And so I said, you know what, I think that would be a great direction to kind of help them stay on the street. And, but also give, like I said earlier, the family also needs to understand how to help that person. So whether it's someone with, you know, some kind of mental disability um, or someone just coming home, that's stressful. Whether it's, you know, a year or 20 years, the family needs to understand, don't jump on that person and say, hurry up, you got to do this, you got to do that. So... That was one of the goals that I had. Um, but then more recently, I've been wanting to start a documentary and, and have Corey record everything that he's ever going through. Mm -hmm. But also just in some kind of way, develop a, a real documentary, a series probably, um, so that he can give everyone his gift because everyone else has talked about him and put things out there, but you need to hear it from him. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one of the biggest things that I wanted to do, and that's why I started reaching out to you. Because I said, you know what, we gotta get this down. We gotta right. get this documented. And I think that's, Brian, you see I think that's I see important. Huh? You see what I see though? Did y'all see what she just did? Even though, that's a cameraman's opinion. You trying to get rich off the blood, sweat, and tears of my labor. <laughs> That's what's going on here. Is that hey, how you yeah, saw that? I'm not signing that contract. See, look. Hey, but I'm going to tell y'all, like, all jokes aside, like, he, Corey's obviously a super interesting person, and the story got to get told. So a lot of times we feel like people, we take it for granted that people understand what we experience, but it's got to get documented. And you've learned, like, from uh, let's say like Donald Trump, I mean you can change history and rewrite. So we heard it when we came up, like when they had you a social studies book, and then you found out later that this book was totally inaccurate. Yes. Right. Yes. You. It's important that you document Corey's story. Yes. It's going to inspire a lot of people. It's going to change a lot of people from maybe going down some paths he went down. It's going. It's going to get. I think it's going to be yeah. dope. I would love to be a part. You know, because I know at, at this age I'm at right now, you know, I would. I want my story told. I want to, you know, I've been in this market since March of 95. Um, I'm like the godfather of this market for what people see now. But I know how quickly the younger generation under me have been trying to wipe out the things I've done because yes. they feel like that's going to propel them. Mm -hmm. But it don't. Right. I think that's the difference. Right. I've respected people who gave me my first opportunity and my success didn't change theirs you know yeah. what i'm saying so yeah, yeah we got to tell Corey's story it's got to be told Absolutely. You know documented what, you know my biggest my biggest problem is right it's hard after going through you know all the streets street stuff becoming you know a street legend all that crazy stuff right it's hard to be normal man like if you're trying to be normal people won't let you mm -hmm. like person yeah because yo yo i'm like whoa bro like right time out Nah, cause I ain't scared of nobody, bro. It's not that serious, man. You know? Mm -hmm. And like, as I always say, like, if you're not careful, when you make that change and that now you want to become a spokesperson, you know, of all the do's and don'ts of street life, mm -hmm. people try to play you out of position and play you off the street. 
play you into a box, if you feed into it, you know what I mean? So that's the that's the biggest and the hardest thing to do, man, is just to be a regular, a regular Have, have person. you always been this, like, humble and meek? Like, I have to be mean as hell. Really? Bro. Yeah. Interesting. Love fighting, all that. Mm -hmm. Now, you got to really push me to make me, like, because I understand what hurt is now. See, you look at it one way in the street as, yeah, well, I'm going to put his head out. But you're not looking at him. I put his head out. He can't go home to his dad or his mom. His kid might be at the door waiting mm. to have dinner with him. He's not going to be home no more. You know what I'm saying? So it was different now. So with me, it's like it's like stacking a bunch of dominoes. I'm trying to see in what angle, what angle each domino going for, as 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 opposed to not caring at all. So how long? What? At, how long have you been? Let's just use the word changed. Like. What, a long time. Now. But if you would get an estimate number of years where you think I'm you had a 19. big shift, I'm gonna say 19 because I came home in 2003. I had a couple incidents. I ain't gonna make it seem like this changed. I had to put hands on set a couple of times, but you know, I start. I came home with the thought of damn, yo, we cutting people, people getting scarred up. Um, my mother was the one who really made me change. She seen me. She said, "What happened to your face?" And you can see the look in her eyes, like. Like, what the hell? Like, oh, hell was getting ready to break loose. She started crying. Because mm -hmm. she'd never seen the scars. She didn't know I got cut. When I seen this, I said, damn. I got one. I'm one person with one cut, but I cut over 2,000 people in prison. What about their mother? How their mother looked at it? You understand? Know so it kind of rubbed me the wrong deep. way. I always been a happy kid, bro. I played basketball. I played baseball. I roller skate. I ice skate. I ski. You know what I mean? Football. So... I was never really like, like, inactive when it came to academic stuff, stuff like that or whatever. Prison changes you. The streets change you. Cause I was vicious on the street before I went to prison. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, your 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 hero sibling. Cause my brother King was was, was our hero. Sometimes <coughs> your love for your for your for your sibling, especially the one the, the well loved one. Can turn you into a beast. Mm. My brother could look up like, and that was it. I went, I went light side with ballistics. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, sometimes kids grow up like myself, and we really didn't have a choice. It's like, either you down or you not. Mm. You know what I mean? So it was different. So now I want to tell my truth at the same time. You know, I want to travel state to state if I could, and go to schools and parks wherever and talk to the youth man that's what they lacking people talk to y'all just to get that little benefit money from the government for these non-profits i do that shit for free bro mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because it's that real it's that serious you know we lose them fast so somebody got to do it you know mm -hmm. everybody say yes okay yo i'm telling i can get you a bag and snap whoa bro you think about the bag what about the kid though mm -hmm. you know what i mean so that's what it is, man. Yeah, that's why I think Vindication Podcast was perfect. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, so. so with that said, ladies and gentlemen, this is a troubleshoot. You may see these episodes down the line. But you will see this episode over here once we could tweak it. We find out, you know, exactly what our mojo is. And then we'll get it to you fresh off the press. Vindication Podcast. I love it. Dope. Yeah. Right. Yep. Bro, bro, bro.